Here's a real nice looking, professionally rebuilt starter for a 56 Chevy 235. It only lasted about 300 miles and then wouldn't turn at all. I'm gonna have a crack at it because my sympathy uh, and money for the local motor shop has disappeared completely. I removed the drive housing and armature and found that they replaced the brushes and painted the interior with a red varnish. It appears one of the windings is shorted out on the housing. The suspect windings are held in place with steel blocks that are attached by a large flathead screw on the outside. This is my biggest screwdriver that I hoped would validate its own existence. I soaked the screws overnight with penetrating oil and I tried many times, but the screw would not budge. I didn't have any hardened steel screwdrivers that would fit snug in the screw slot, so I had to make one with a chisel. I was web surfing for a method to extract difficult screws and saw a picture of a motor in a press with a wrench and screwdriver bit, but no explanation. Luckily, I had a press collecting dust for the past decade and tried to extract the screw cold, but it still wouldn't budge and was damaging the screw slot. So now you see me heating up the case, which worked nicely. What you heard there was a sigh of relief. I seriously was out of ideas. Now since the chisel is tightly pressed on the screw, I'm having to relieve the pressure as the screw comes out and also straighten the chisel as it loosens as well. Here's the retaining block and the screw threads are in pretty good shape. Ugh, my euphoria is short lived as I look at the second screw. I just removed about two minutes of video heating the case. The case is very warm, especially around the screw area, but the paint hasn't been burned. All right, time for the number two screw. Let's hope it all goes well. Yes, I like it. This is pretty warm. Looks like it's in good shape. Okay, looking inside, after the retaining blocks have been removed from the windings, uh, they're still held in place by this solder joint that's ganged up on the uh, post. I was hoping my 230-watt Weller soldering iron would be hot enough, but it just wasn't. In this shot, you can see I had to add some extra heat with a portable torch, and still it had trouble getting hot enough. Just right about now is when I got that feeling I was going to get that super hot soldering iron I always wanted.
Here's where it shorted out on the case. Too bad they didn't replace these old tattered windings or at least put some of that insulating varnish under them where it would have done some good. eBay rocks again for the little guy who feels like he got ripped off by the big motor shop. For 56 bucks, I got a new set that came with a terminal stud and uh, mounting screws for the field. Challenge now is to install the new windings and fit the leads into the terminal stud. The quality does not match the vintage parts, so I think I'll use the old stud and the screws holding the windings in. There they are, the terminal stud and the insulating washers. Here's a couple of uh, speedy shots of the two fields being fitted in the case. I did that multiple times uh, to ensure the leads fit into that terminal stud and don't interfere with the armature or the through bolts that hold the end plates. Another main concern is keeping the field leads as far from the case as they can be. Uh, right now is a great time to put the through bolts in to see where they are relative to those leads. Hmm, fibroid fish paper. Now my imagination is getting the upper hand. While I was at the electronics store, I found this insulating paper that I'm going to add to this repair. I think it may be overkill, but uh, what the heck, says Hack Monkey. Also, while I was at the electronics uh, store, I found the red insulating varnish uh, that apparently the professionals at the overhaul shop uh, sparingly used uh, during the overhaul. But now I'm applying it to the retaining blocks on those sides and the bottoms of the uh, paper that's going to be between the field and the uh, case and actually could actually stop something from shorting out, uh, not just spraying it on the face to make it look nice. Even though it's insulating paper, I'm gonna coat it with this stuff just in case oil saturates it or uh, the paper wears out or I don't know. I'm gonna paint the uh, case as well with that uh, insulating varnish since I got a whole bottle of it. Here is the final product of the uh, fields installation. Uh, the paper behind them and then the housing also is uh, varnished with that red insulator. All ready for the final tightening of the screws, uh, putting Loctite on them so that they don't back out. Here's the terminal block. I'm going to install it uh, or put it in place uh, just to be sure the things are lined up while the field retainers are screwed in place. Everything looks pretty good. Before I try to solder the field leads, I'm going to tin the slot in the terminal stud. And here we go. Oh, I cut a lot of video out uh, heating up this terminal block. It's about ready to uh, accept the uh, solder uh, and get tinned, uh, but it always seems like an eternity when you're waiting for that uh, to heat up. It is a pretty big chunk of uh, copper. All right, finally all done. 
and this is what it looks like. Uh, way easier to try to solder something when it already has a coating of tin. I also tin the ends of those leads uh, where they enter the uh, slot in the terminal block. Here I bought this uh, on Craigslist uh, for 30 bucks and I'm uh, pretty sure it'll be hot enough to heat up that terminal block as it sits in the case. All right, I've uh, cut out some of the video sitting heating this thing up. Uh, the yellow wires are in there are a lame attempt for a heat sink just so that the uh, fields don't get too hot. Uh, it uh, appears to be getting hot enough to uh, melt the solder and, and make that uh, gang joint. Uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, success. Looks like we got a nice solder joint in the terminal block. All right, the next uh, hurdle is to pull back the brushes to allow the armature to slide into the rear bearing. I made these little hooks out of bendable wire and they seem to work okay. One end hooks on the brush and pulls it back while the other piece of wire will hold that uh, brush in place out of the way of the commutator. There are four brushes, so got to make four retaining wires. Kind of boring. It didn't drop right in all the way, so I'm looking to see if one of the brushes uh, isn't far enough back to allow it to drop in. But I don't see anything uh, that is in the way. It's just not lined up with the bearing. All right, finally, bonus. All right, now you can remove those uh, clips uh, and let the brushes uh, fall onto the commutator. I already removed two of them, so these are the other two.
Now some more of that fibroid fish paper. I'm gonna put it on underneath this uh, metal sleeve. Uh, the last uh, repair on it uh, had it, so I'm going to put some fresh on there. There is a hole, I'm going to line it up and that'll be on the bottom of the starter to allow uh, drainage. Uh, time for the motor switch to get installed. Throw some Loctite on that too, just so it doesn't move. That about does it. It looks like exactly like it did when I brought it in. I hope it works. It's cleaner. Feed me, Seymour. Gotta wait for it.